Acute gingival infections. Acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. A 30-year-old male patient came to my clinic complaining of painful gums that worsened with hot spicy food. The patient also went on to say that his gums bled on tooth brushing. I observed the patient for any signs of malnourishment, the presence of obvious skin lesions and proceeded to check his body temperature. I palpated his submaxillary and submental lymph nodes to check for any enlargement. Next, I moved on to examine his oral cavity. I noticed that the gums appeared as if someone had punched them out with their fists. A grey membrane covering the gums was also noted. The membrane peeled off easily, leaving raw areas that started bleeding. I also noticed the presence of halitosis. To confirm my suspicion, I asked the patient a few detailed questions that involved his medical history, recent illnesses, his living conditions and dietary background, cigarette smoking habits, type of employment, hours of rest, risk factors for HIV, and psychosocial parameters such as stress and depression. He told me he had a stressful work style without proper rest and was a smoker. A detailed history of the disease should focus on the onset and duration. Was the disease recurrent? Had there been any previous treatment? If yes, when, for how long and what type of treatment was it? My next step was diagnostic tests. I asked for an HSV and HIV test to be done, which showed a negative result for both. At this point, acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis seemed to be the best clinical fit. ANUG aka Acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis is a microbial disease of the gingiva in an impaired host. The terms acute and ulcerative are irrelevant as chronic cases are also noted and ulceration is an indefinite sequence of the necrosis. The term NG or necrotizing gingivitis would be more appropriate. This condition was classically noted as an epidemic in the military population in the trenches during World War I, therefore calling it trench mouth. At present, this scenario is even noted in cases of systemic diseases and severe malnutrition. French physician Henry Vincent described this condition in the 19th century, giving it another name, Vincent's infection. It can occur at all ages, with the highest incidence reported between ages 15 and 30 years. This disease may have periods of remission and exacerbations or may occur in previously treated patients. The involvement may be limited to a few teeth or may be widespread throughout the mouth. Now let's understand the classical oral presentation of this disease that made me suspect ANUG. The punched out appearance of the lesions on the gums create bowl shaped cavities. We refer to this pattern as punched out crater like lesions. They usually appear on the interdental papillae and may extend to the marginal gingiva, rarely involving the attached gingiva and the oral mucosa. A grey pseudomembranous slough may cover the gums which peel off easily, leaving red, shiny, hemorrhagic gingiva beneath that bleeds spontaneously or even with the slightest stimulation. This slough is demarcated from the remaining oral mucosa by a red line called the linear gingival erythema. There can also be fetid odor and increased salivation. Presence of pericoronal flaps, periodontal pockets and local risk factors such as poorly contoured and ill-fitting restorations, presence and distribution of calculus must be checked. Periodontal probing of ANUG lesions is postponed in the initial visit as it is very painful. Pop quiz Now let's discuss the nature of the pain which can be an important key to diagnosis.
Patients usually describe the constant and dull pain that intensifies on taking hot and spicy food. We describe this pain as gnawing pain. Other symptoms experienced by the patients include radiating pain, metallic foul taste and being aware of the pasty salivary secretions. Now let's move on to discuss the extraoral and systemic signs and symptoms. While my patient had no other systemic illnesses, it is common for ANUG to show some systemic signs depending on the stage of the disease. In cases of mild to moderate ANUG, there could be local lymphadenopathy and a slight elevation in temperature. In cases of severe ANUG, high fever, increased pulse rate, leukocytosis, loss of appetite and general lassitude are noted. Lesions of ANUG are uncommon in children, but if they occur, the systemic reactions can be severe. These include insomnia, constipation, gastrointestinal disorders, headache and mental depression. Let's move on to the etiology. It is caused by the fusiform bacteria and a spirochetal organism referred to as the fusospirochetal complex. These are noted in the layer between the necrotic and the living tissue. This garden provided electron microscopic data confirming the presence of spirochetes in the ulcerated lesions. He described four zones that blend and may not be present in every case. Let's start with zone 1. This is called the bacterial zone and is most superficial. It consists of a variety of bacteria, including spirochetes. These may be small, medium and large size. Next we have zone 2. This is called the neutrophil rich zone as it is rich with neutrophils which are a type of leukocytes or white blood cells. Among these neutrophils, we can also see many spirochetes. Moving on to zone 3. This zone is called the necrotic zone because it is made up of disintegrated tissue, fibrillar material, remains of collagen, various spirochetes of medium and large types, and some other organisms. Lastly, we have zone 4, which is the zone of spirochetal infiltration. This zone has only medium and large spirochetes. Tissue disintegration is absent as this is the deepest layer. It is important to note that the fusospirochetal complex is also found in patients without ANUG. Therefore, just the presence of bacteria is not enough to cause the disease. Along with bacteria impaired host response or the immunosuppression plays a major role. Immunodeficiency may be related to varying levels of nutritional deficiency such as vitamin C and B2. Fatigue due to chronic sleep deprivation, alcohol or drug abuse, psychosocial factors, debilitating systemic diseases like chronic diseases, syphilis, cancer, severe gastrointestinal disorders, ulcerative colitis, blood dyscrasias, leukemia, anemia, and AIDS. ANUG can also occur in a disease-free mouth or can be superimposed on pre-existing chronic gingival disease, deep periodontal pockets, pericoronal flaps, and traumatized gingiva. The other causative factors are smoking and psychosomatic conditions. After collecting all the above information about my patient's history, signs and symptoms, and assessing the causative factors, ANUG was a definitive diagnosis. Now let us learn the differential diagnosis, which include primary herpetic gingivostomatitis, disquamative gingivitis, chronic destructive periodontal disease, diphtheria, secondary stage of syphilis, streptococcal gingivostomatitis, agranulocytosis, and Vincent's angina. Let's proceed to differentiate each condition individually. Primary herpetic gingivostomatitis has a specific viral etiology, HSV being the main causative factor. 
In our case, the patient tested HSV negative, allowing me to rule it out. The characteristic vesicles, as noted in HSV lesions, were also absent. The diffuse involvement of gingiva, which may include buccal mucosa and lips, is unusual for A and UG. Let's move on to the second condition. Disquamative gingivitis also shows diffuse involvement. Necrosis is absent in the papillae. It may or not be painful. There is patchy disquamation of the epithelium instead of the pseudomembrane. No fetid odor is noted as seen in the ANUG. The third differential is chronic destructive periodontal disease, which is painless if uncomplicated. Necrosis of the papillae is absent. Though not strikingly fetid as in ANUG, some odor may be present. Fourth, we have diphtheria. It rarely affects the marginal gingiva. Bacterial smears reveal Cornibacterium diphtheriae. Membrane removal is difficult. Lesions are less painful. Throat, fauces, and tonsils may be affected. Unlike in the case of ANUG, antibiotic therapy has minimal effect. The fifth differential is secondary stage of syphilis, which can affect part of the mouth but rarely affects the marginal gingiva. Bacterial smears reveal treponema pallidum. Membrane cannot be detached. Minimal pain is experienced. The sixth differential is streptococcal gingivostomatitis, which shows a diffuse erythema of gingiva and other areas of oral mucosa. However, it may also be confined to marginal erythema. Necrosis of gingival margin and fetid odor are not present as in ANUG. Bacterial smears show Streptococcus viridens. The seventh differential is agranulocytosis. This condition resembles ANUG due to the presence of necrosis and ulceration of gingiva, but lacks the severe inflammatory reaction. It also shows lesions on the throat and other mucous membranes. Blood studies serve to differentiate between these two lesions. The last differential is Vincent's angina. Similar to in UG, it also has a fusospirochetal infection. However, while ANUG is restricted to the marginal gingiva, Vincent's angina can extend to the oropharynx and the throat. Painful membranous ulceration of the throat with edema and hyperemic patches break down to form ulcers covered by pseudomembranous material, which may extend to the larynx and the middle ear. My final step is to treat my patient. During his initial visit, I restricted my treatment to the acutely involved areas. I began by isolating the area with cotton rolls, ensuring it was dry and then applied topical anesthetic. After a short wait of about two to three minutes, I gently swabbed the area with a moist cotton pellet to remove the pseudomembrane and unattached surface debris. Note here that swabbing larger areas should be avoided. As soon as I removed the pseudomembrane, the lesion bled profusely. I cleansed the area with warm water and removed the superficial calculus using an ultrasonic scaler. This type of scaler is usually preferred as it is painless and the water jet helps in flushing of debris. Another important thing to note here is that I choose to avoid subgingival scaling, curettage, and surgical procedures during this visit to prevent the spread of infection to deeper tissues and bacteremia. Before discharge, I gave these instructions to my patient. Avoid alcohol, tobacco, and spicy food. Get adequate rest. Using an ultra soft brush, restrict the tooth brushing to remove surface debris using a bland toothpaste or just water. Rinse with a glass full of an equal mixture of 3% hydrogen peroxide and warm water every two hours and or 0.12% chlorhexidine solution twice daily. Take an analgesic for pain relief and report back in one to two days. As my patient was free of systemic complications, I did not recommend any antibiotics. But if the patient does report with systemic complications, then antibiotics may be prescribed as follows. 
amoxicillin 500 milligrams orally every 6 hours for 10 days and erythromycin 500 milligram every 6 hours or metronidazole 500 milligram twice daily for 7 days in amoxicillin sensitive patients. Pop quiz. During the second visit, the patient reported improvement in the pain and other signs and symptoms. I noted that the gingival margin was erythematous, but without a pseudomembrane. I did scaling to remove the previously covered calculus, then sent him home with the same instructions and told him to report back in five days. During the third visit, I observed a considerable improvement. I did the scaling to remove calculus remnants then advised him about oral hygiene procedures and the effect of nutrition, smoking and other habits that may lead to the recurrence of the lesions. I told him to discontinue the hydrogen peroxide rinses and continue with chlorhexidine rinses for an additional two to three weeks. Pop quiz. During his next visit, after four to six weeks, I checked if there was any need for reconstructive or aesthetic surgery and formulated a comprehensive management. Role of topical drug therapy in ANUG. It is only an adjunctive measure. Escarotic drugs such as phenol, silver nitrate, chromic acid or potassium bichromate should not be used as they reduce the pain by destroying the nerve endings of the ulcerated gingiva and destroy young cells that are needed for repair and delay healing. With this, we come to the end of our discussion on acute ulcerative necrotic gingivitis. We will be continuing with the other acute gingival infections in our next video. We hope you had fun learning with us.